Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to take a look at momentum in two dimensions, but we're only going to do it graphically. We're not actually going to work a problem all the way, but at least you'll get the full understanding of how momentum works in two dimensions. Because after all, momentum is always conserved if it's motion in one dimension, two dimensions, or three dimensions, it doesn't matter. Momentum is conserved in each direction. What does that mean? Well, notice here we have one billiard ball moving to the right at some initial velocity and the second one which is not moving at all. So the initial momentum of the system, the two billiard balls, is equal to the momentum of this object right there. After the collision, both billiard balls move out in different directions and we can say that the momentum before the collision must equal the momentum after the collision. How does that work? Well, like this. Let's first look at the momentum in the x direction before the collision. So in the x direction, we can say that the initial momentum, p in the x direction initially, is equal to m1 times v sub 1 initially. In other words, it's all due to the motion of the one billiard ball because the second one is at rest. In the y direction, Notice that the momentum in the y direction initially must equal zero because there's no component of the velocity in the y direction, it's only in the x direction. Which means that after the collision, if I then realize that since this ball, this billiard ball is moving in this direction, it will have an x component, v sub 1 final in the x direction, and it will have a y component, v sub 1 final in the y direction. And likewise, this billiard ball will have an x component, v sub 2 final in the x direction, and a y component, v sub 2 final in the y direction. Which means if I then take all the x components, the momentum of the two billiard balls after the collision in the x direction should equal the momentum of this one billiard ball before the collision. And the momentum of this billiard ball in the y direction plus the momentum of this billiard ball in the y direction, those two added together, should equal zero because that was the initial momentum in the y direction before the collision. In other words, what I can do now is write the equations p initial equals p final for both directions. And that's the way you handle momentum in two dimensions. So in the x direction, we can write that p initial, oops, p in the x direction initial must equal p in the x direction final, like that. And in the case of the x direction, we can say that m1 v1 initial must equal the two summed together here, which is m1 v1 final in the x direction plus m2 v2 final in the x direction. And in the y direction, let me write it over here, you can say that p in the y direction initial must equal p in the y direction final. And so in this case, it's zero in the y direction, which means that they must add up in the y direction as well after the collision to be equal to zero. Notice that this billiard ball goes upward in the y direction, that's a positive momentum. And this billiard ball goes down into, in the negative direction, or downward, which means in the negative direction, therefore that's negative momentum. So what, can, what we can write here, that this would be equal to m1 v1 final in the y direction, right here, minus, because I'm taking that into account, that this is going to be moving in a negative direction, m2 v2 final in the y direction. And then obviously, these two components must be equal to each other because they must add up to zero. Now, if we know the direction of motion, if we know the angle relative to the horizontal and call this theta sub 1, and we know this angle right here relative to the horizontal, let's call that theta sub 2, we can say that this therefore is equal to v1 final in the x direction, which would be v1 final times the cosine of theta sub 1. And here, this can be written as v2 final times the cosine of theta 2. And in the y direction, this is equal to v2 final times the sine of theta 2. And this can be written as v1 final times the sine of 
theta sub 1. I'm a little out of room here, so let me move this one over here. This is V1 final, like that. So you can see that when you know the angle at which each object moves, you can find the x and the y components of both directions, and then you can write this as follows. So this then would be equal to m1 v1 initial must equal m1 v1 final times the cosine of theta 1 plus m2 v2 final times the Oh, wait a minute, something is wrong here. This should be x, not y. I got this messed up, this is y. So v2 final times the cosine of theta sub 2. So I made the mistake here, that should be v final in the x direction, just like this is v final in the x direction here. All right, now for the y direction, 0 must equal m1 v1 final times the sine of theta 1 minus, because I know it's going to be in a negative y direction, m2 times v2 final times the sine of theta sub 2. And that's how you work in two dimensions. Now, of course, you can do the same in three dimensions. That typically is not done until you go into more advanced courses. But you can see now that when you work with momentum in two dimensions, that you must look at each direction separately. You work out the momentum conservation in the x direction and the momentum conservation in the y direction with two separate equations, finding the components in the x direction like this and finding the components in the y direction like that. And then later on in the series, you'll see some examples of how to actually calculate that just in this method. And that's how it's done.